I hope you're all enjoying the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remix. There are a lot of cool tunes on the game's soundtracks, but one that stands out in particular is the lake theme. If you listen, you'll hear the swaying 6-8 rhythm, cascading harp scales, and lush string pads whisking you off to a dreamy land of, dare I say it, jazz chords. This is perfect for evoking the serene feeling of going and hanging out by a lake until all of a sudden the music knocks you on your ass with an expertly executed metric modulation. So today, let's talk a little bit about metric modulations, what they are, how you do them, why you would want to, and why they make Pokemon Diamond and Pearl's lake theme feel so badass. So first, what is a metric modulation? It's honestly pretty rare, but occasionally you'll find a piece that abruptly changes how you feel the pulse of the music. And I don't mean just changing the way the groove feels or changing the time signature, although that's usually part of it too, I mean the underlying beat is changed to be slower or faster than it was before the modulation. You can't just jump from one tempo to a completely different tempo though, or well you can, but that's not a metric modulation, that's just a very annoying thing to ask a musician to perform. For it to be a metric modulation, the new pulse has to have some rhythmic relationship with the old pulse, some kind of mathematical equation where you can derive one pulse from the other. For example, if you had a piece of music based on a straight 4-4 groove, you could set up a metric modulation where the 16th note of the original tempo becomes the 8th note triplet of a new shuffle groove. That would sound something like this. You can feel the tempo speed up and the rhythmic feel change, but if you just listen to the hi-hat playing the 16th note and the 8th note triplets, you can hear it playing at a consistent speed across this transition. I believe that it's this connection between the two rhythmic feels that gives metric modulations their sense of depth and power. In the case of the lake theme, we start off with a slow, calm 6-8 groove for the A sections and alternate with a more energetic straight feel in 4-4 time for the B sections. Let's take a listen and pay attention to the blast of energy that takes over the tune once we modulate to the new time. first time I heard that, it just about knocked me off my feet. So what exactly is going on here? Well the 8th note of the A section's 6-8 time is equivalent to the 8th note of the new 4-4 time, but we feel the pulse speed up as each beat goes from taking 3 8th notes in length to taking only 2. Here's a simplified example of the same metric modulation so you can see what I mean more clearly. This 6-8 drum part is going to transition to a 4-4 groove, but the 8th note hi-hat part is going to stay totally consistent even as the pulse changes. Obviously, this example I made doesn't feel anywhere close to as hype as the lake theme, thanks to a variety of factors that accentuate the effect of this metric modulation. First of all, there's a harmonic modulation to accompany the metric modulation. The A section's cascading harp part and swelling string pads follow a repeating 4 to 1 progression in the key of F, B flat major to F major. Moving between the 1 and 4 chords like this is a great way to evoke the kind of calm, peaceful feeling that we want here because there's not a lot of harmonic motion, and both chords are very stable and very pretty. To add to the prettiness, each chord is layered with rich upper extensions, including a bright sharp 11th note. This fits naturally over the 4 chord, but introducing the sharp 11 over the 1 chord as well puts us into more of a modal jazz chord territory. Actually, if you'll excuse the digression, this is a perfect example of a harmonic concept that can be really useful. 
This 16th note harp part that ripples over each chord takes a pentatonic scale and follows it through a skip down, step up pattern, like so. The cool part is which pentatonic scales are chosen over each chord. Over the B-flat major, we see an F major pentatonic scale used. Using the pentatonic scale based off of the fifth of the chord provides us with all of the colorful extensions of the chord. The major seventh, the sixth, the ninth, and then of course the third and fifth. This is a great color to use over major chords that sounds really lush and beautiful. A variation comes in the following harp run where the same pattern is applied to a C pentatonic scale over the same B flat major chord. This is just one note different from our previous example, but using the pentatonic scale based off of the second of the chord gives us that sharp 11th, as well as all of the colorful extensions we saw before. This is a great way to conceptualize using the sound of the Lydian mode, and it's something that you find in a lot of modern jazz playing. We see the same thing happen over the following F major chord. First, we follow the same pattern using the pentatonic scale based on the fifth of the chord, in this case, C pentatonic. Then, we switch to the scale based on the second of the chord, in this case, G pentatonic. This might be the most colorful 4 to 1 progression I've ever heard in my life. Instead of any distinct feeling of harmonic motion, the chords in this section just wash over you, creating one rich color for your ears to soak in. This distinct harmonic sound is contrasted beautifully by the tonality of the B section, which sees the previous one chord, F major, moving up suddenly to a G major 9 chord. This section also starts on the 4, technically being in the key of D major, and it also uses extremely pretty extended major chords, but the approach to the harmony is completely different than before. Rather than a repeating vamp between the 1 and 4 chords focused on creating a mood, each chord shift in the B section emphasizes creating motion that leads to the next chord. This G major chord moves immediately to a G minor chord, a big tonal shift, which slides down chromatically to the following F sharp minor 7. Tension builds as this turns into an F sharp diminished chord which resolves to the following E minor. The same kind of move happens as we get this E diminished that resolves to our tonic D major, then a final F over G chord sets up a return to the top of the tune. The overall structure is moving down by step from the 4 chord to the 1 chord, and putting dissonant diminished chords in between each step supercharges the feeling of motion in the progression. The two sections use completely different keys and approaches to harmony along with the different rhythmic feel to contrast each other nicely. Getting back to the rhythmic feel, it's not just the pulse that changes here. The B section adopts a new rhythmic approach by using a 30 second note subdivision in these rippin' harp arpeggios and trap beat hi-hat flourishes in the drum part. The extremely busy drum part, syncopated bass and synth chords, and wild 30-second note arpeggios blasting at you all at once is just on the verge of overwhelming, but the simple, singable melody keeps it all tied together perfectly. Even without metrically modulating into it, this section is just super hype. But that leads us to a question. Why would you bother metrically modulating? What's the point? Why do these two sections need to be part of the same song when they both work perfectly well on their own? I think we do it for the same reason we modulate to a new key, to add depth to a piece of music by putting it in a new light. Think about it like this. The key of A major doesn't sound any brighter or more open than the key of C major. 
If you play a piece in one key or the other, it won't make any difference to the listener, all other things being equal. But if you start a piece in the key of C, and then modulate to the key of A, it feels incredibly bright. The music opens up all of a sudden, like the sun breaking through the clouds. between these keys and the transition from one to the other that adds a new dimension to the music when we modulate. In the same way, this 4-4 groove is really unique and cool, but it's the transition from the previous 6-8 groove and the mathematical connection between the two that makes moving to the B section feel euphoric. One last tip I'll give you if you're interested in writing a metric modulation into your music is to set up the transition. When you modulate to a new key, it doesn't always work to just abruptly jump to the new key. Usually you'll want to smooth things out with a pivot chord or some kind of setup that resolves into the key you're targeting. The same is true rhythmically. Notice in the lake theme how the melody changes two bars before the metric modulation. This repeated dotted eighth to sixteenth figure starts breaking up the bar into groups of two eighth notes rather than three, expertly setting up the new pulse we're about to hear. The drums and harp join in on the last bar before the transition, breaking up the bar in the same way to lead right into that metric modulation. The way that the B section groove breaks up each bar into groups of 3, 3, and 2 eighth notes adds to this effect too. The synth chords, the bass, the kick drum, and the snare drum emphasize this pattern, but it's probably easiest to hear if we just isolate the kick and snare. This isn't an insane syncopation on its own, but coming right out of a 6-8 section where the pulse had 3 eighth notes per beat, emphasizing groups of 3 eighth notes like this makes it easy to think that we're still in our old time signature until the bar resolves with this 2 eighth note group to make it fit into the new bar of 4-4 four, four time. It might take a couple bars for the first time listener to get their rhythmic bearings and figure out where the new beat actually is. Getting shot up into the air like this and needing to find your footing makes this metric modulation feel even cooler! Setting up the new rhythmic feel a few bars beforehand and letting the old rhythmic feel cross over just a little bit into the new time elevates the modulation to expert status. Well, now that you know what a metric modulation is, and a little bit about how they work, you can go out into the world with a newfound confidence in yourself. Your lunch will taste a little better now. You'll find strangers looking at you with respect. Or maybe you'll just notice this tune when you're playing the Diamond and Pearl remix and think, Oh, that's a metric modulation. Whatever, that's good too. If you appreciated this video and would like to have my transcription of this piece, consider supporting the channel on my Patreon page here. You can also follow me on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.